Good morning, vlog passengers. In today's episode of Vlog Driver, I'm going to be reviewing Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, the movie. Now, I have a lot to say about this movie, and as such, this episode of Vlog Driver, episode 119, is going to come in two parts. And when I say two parts, I mean two separate videos. There are going to be two episode 119s. In the first episode 119, this one, I'm going to talk about all the things that I liked about this movie. And in the second episode, I'm going to talk about the things that I didn't like about the movie. So, if you thought Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince was wonderful and won't hear a word against it, then just watch this episode 119. If you thought it was horrible and don't want to hear a word for it, then watch the other episode 119. Or if you, like me, have rather mixed reviews of the movie or just don't care if it, somebody says bad things or good things about the movie, watch both episodes. There was a lot to recommend this movie. There were a lot of good things happening in this movie. And in a lot of ways, this was one of the best movies that they put out thus far. If there's been a flaw with the series at this point, it is that the style of directing, much like the style of teaching in the Defense Against the Dark Arts classes, has been sporadic because we keep changing directors. But now David Yates is doing it. He did movie five, he's doing both movie sevens, and he's a wonderful director. He really understands how to tell a story. He knows which elements need to be emphasized, which elements need to be scaled back. He uses foreshadowing and symbolism and all sorts of great stuff in there. There's a whole lot of wonderful things to catch in his directing. I think he did an excellent job with movie five, I think he did an excellent job with this movie, and I'm looking forward to what he does with movie seven. Also, the acting in this movie was about as good as I've ever seen in a Harry Potter movie. Now, I feel compelled to defend the actors because I am one myself, and also because the actors tend to be the ones that are most harshly criticized, I've noticed. And I'm not just talking about the Harry Potter movies, I'm talking about movies in general. The actors are criticized because they're the ones that you see. This movie rekindled my love for Maggie Smith. Dan and Rupert, of course, improve with every movie, and Emma Watson, bless her, is not acting with her eyebrows anymore. Bonnie Wright finally got a few lines in this movie. Bellatrix Lestrange was a psychotic three-year-old, which was wonderful. I think that Michael Gamden's portrayal of Dumbledore has been quite good. But by far the best acting in this movie was from Alan Rickman and Tom Felton. Alan Rickman played Snape beautifully, of course, as he always does. But Tom Felton, wow, that guy was amazing in this movie. It's really something when you see a character who has been played as this sniveling, snotty brat for the past five movies, and in this movie you find yourself feeling sorry for him. And as for the writing, well, I will say that Steve Cloves has improved. His writing still has plenty of flaws, which I'll be getting to in the other part of episode 119. Hello, Chipmunk. But there were definite improvements in the writing. Really, the feel that this was kind of a calm in the series really came through. I've always kind of seen book six as a relaxing bridge between the angst of book five and the angst of book seven. Now is the time to hang back, to regroup, to learn more about your enemy. That's what this book is all about. The movie captured this spirit rather well. So this movie was not as bad as it could have been. And that's it for part one of episode 119. If you would like to hear some of the bad things I have to say about the movie, tune in for the next part of episode 119. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.